So as you guys crest this hill, you see below you in, in the valley where the, the lab is located, you see a, a giant hulking figure uh, guarding the gate. And as you get closer, you notice that not only is this a hulking giant figure, it's actually it's actually got three heads. And as you get even closer, you see that it is, in fact, a giant three-headed ogre. Now, Francis pulls you aside uh, before you can get any further and says, Okay, guys, so this guy, I know this guy. He sucks. Oh, yeah. oh no. No, all, it's, all don't worry heads? about it. All, I, like, are, he just, all three heads suck the same? Yeah, they do. No, they're like, they're, 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 they're real tight with each other. It's like, there's no, it, you, you would think that with three heads, maybe they could be a little more democratic. No, they're like a Republican run Senate. They are just very, they're just steamrolling everything. <laughs> hey man, you don't need to make it political. You know? we're, just here, we're just here trying to help you figure out who killed your brother. <laughs> so anyway, this, this ogre, uh, his name is Martin Threeman. <laughs> mm. <laughs> and he's kind of in charge of security around here on account of his three heads. So there's really no way to sneak around him. And honestly, would you say he's the three heads of security? <laughs> oh, man. Well done, Jonathan. Oh, just top notch, buddy. I'm just I'm just having fun. Hey, you know? hey, hey, slap me some slap me some skull, my dude. Oh, here it is. <laughs> they high five. They've somehow worked out an entire high five sequence. Uh, in the short time they've known each other, it's Jonathan, just hitting Jonathan different. Have no arms. <laughs> it's just hitting different, different parts of my head. <laughs> he, he kind of plays Jonathan like a uh, like a bongo, or just a marimba. One finger right in my eye socket. Yeah, like that. <laughs> then he shakes him like a maraca, uh, and it's, it's very pleasant. So, again, there's going to be a ton of monsters inside. I don't think we should be wasting our energy on this guy. Here's the, my plan. You guys need to distract him. And while you do that, while you've got him fully distracted, I'm going to sneak behind him and I'm going to tase the shit out of him. <laughs> <laughs> I love this plan. Legsy is on board. So Francis uh, elaborates on his plan a little bit. What you guys are going to do is you're going to approach Martin Threeman uh, and you're going to pretend that you are a lost group of actors. Mm -hmm. um, and you guys are going to put on a short three-act play Yes. To fully distract uh, Martin Threeman. Oh my God. And by doing a three act play, of course, each of you is going to need to come up with one act of this play. Uh, one act for each head. One act for each head to fully distract them. Um, but what that might look like in the realm of drawing is, of course, a three panel comic. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. <laughs> it's been a long time coming, but uh, guys, your challenge for this episode is, of course, to create a three panel comic to distract the ogre Martin Threeman. Uh, so that Francis can tase his butt off. Okay, cool. Great. So uh, Francis lays out the plan for you, uh, and you guys all all put your hands. Uh, you all put your hands in for a go team motion. Uh, uh, Legsy puts in one of her fake. Legsy legs. puts one of her fake legs in. Bone Regard puts his, his tiny uh, creepy bone fingers in. Uh, Jonathan just kind of <clears throat> puts his face in, uh, and then you guys all mm -hmm. scream go team, uh, just loud enough for the ogre to hear a little bit. Um, and oh, then Francis, go, go team, yeah. go team, go yeah. team, go team. <laughs> <laughs> and then Francis uh, just aways very quickly. Uh, you're you're actually surprised by how agile he is. Um, but then he he's gone in an instant. He's uh, o over in the brush uh, preparing his taser. Um, so now you guys uh, approach the ogre. Hey, what's that ogre there? Oh, sorry. Uh, hey, what's that ogre there? <laughs> there it is. Good. If Lexi had said that, she would have just instantly tripped. Yeah. <laughs> Good save. Jonathan has no HP to lose. <laughs> uh, hey, hey, who are you guys? Uh, oh, who? Uh, us? We, um. It's me, the three head ogres. It's me. I'm a special guest. <laughs> and I'm here <laughs> to guard stuff. <laughs> Oh. I'm Andy. I'm on this episode. Too. You Thank you. Are you having a good time? Oh, hey, Andy. Are you having a good night? Yeah, man. I love Dungeons and Dragons. I've never played before. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I love the concept of it. Let's all give a People quick round of applause yeah. to uh, Andy Stewart, who is, of course, playing the role of Martin Threeman, the name that he definitely remembered. Yeah, I'm Martin Threeman, the ogre. <laughs> the three heads ogre. So you guys approach the ogre. And uh, he seem he hey. seems instantly wary. So I guess uh, do your best to dissuade him. I am so wary. Hey, Martin Threeman, we we're just three uh, and and change traveling uh, band of 
players. Much much like yourself. I would like better if there were just the three of you. <laughs> it's just it's just three. And there's no more. I'm a fan. It's us three gals <laughs> having a good it's time. It's just us three gals. <laughs> Jonathan, you shut your fucking mouth. Oh. I will so- unsummon you. I'm not okay. <laughs> Sorry. Take it from the top. I, I'm a ventriloquist. I'm here to guard and I'm gonna crush the shit out of you unless there's some kind of feature for me to watch. <laughs> well, hey, I I would imagine I would imagine guarding gets gets pretty boring, you know? It uh, does. We we happen to be um players, um performers, are artists of the theatrical Variety. Right. I'm distracted. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Uh, we, for you, would like to perform. We're just you. You do such a good job here at the gate. You deserve to have a show all wow. to yourself. What? It's so sweet. <laughs> Not at all suspicious. No. <laughs> we just wander the land looking for an audience, and you know, normally we just find one one audience member, but it looks like we got three. You're, th- you're three in one package. Well, um, te- uh, that's a little offensive. Like, uh, just because I have three heads with distinct personalities does not mean that I'm not a single, fulfilled being. That's fair. I've got right. three heads. You'll see if you look. They are each different and carefully rendered. Um, <laughs> that's uh, it's not important. What is important is we're going to entertain <laughs> yeah, we the were, shit out of it you. It seemed like you were. we had you, you know, I took it too far. Yeah. Let's just backtrack it. We had you. We lost you. We'll have you again. Let's okay. set the scene. So, but... All, all three of me have to be entertained for clapping to take place because our mind works in motion, so I'm not going to applaud unless you appeal to each of my three heads. Great. What are each of your three heads into? Uh, well, we like uh, action-adventure, uh, romance, okay. mystery. Yep. Uh, I also like uh, western. All at once? I like anime. I heard anime. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm way into anime, especially like the weird stuff. As well, Francis yells, "I heard anime." <laughs> Francis, Fr- Francis in the bush just, like, has to clap his hand over his mouth. He gets so pumped. <laughs> uh, cool. Yeah. So, so Martin prattles on about uh, about his favorites. He just lists every genre. <laughs> he plops down on a stump, uh, pulls a bag of popcorn out from underneath his loincloth, and uh, gets ready to enjoy your show. Ooh. So let's roll for some initiative, boys. And by boys, I mean ladies. All right. Uh, Julia, you, you won, so you, you roll first. All right. Oh, I got a one. No, that's a seven. Whoa. Oh, that's a seven. It's it, a seven. It looks false like alarm. I false read. one. Uh, it looks seven. like a one. Seven. The gentleman's one. <laughs> <laughs> I also got a seven. All right. Wow. Oh, boy. Wowie wow. Are we going to win at slots today? Guys, we're about to win big in Vegas. I got a 14. Which is two oh. sevens. Which is Holy two sevens. shit. <laughs> Illuminati confirmed. Illuminati uh, confirmed. So, yeah, let's get a roll-off going here. Yeah, d- uh, Nathan, oh, Nathan, Julia, you guys want to? Okay. I got a nine. Okay. I got a four. All right. Our, the All right, order we is decided. Well, the, the order of the, the numbers is decided. Now the order of the panel shall be decided. Jacob, you yes. have won. Uh, yes. Which panel would you like to, in which order would you like to draw? Um, I, I think I've established in in the last episode that Regina is no coward. Mm-hmm. It's uh, one thing about her. Yeah. So uh, I'm gonna go first. Oh man, I love it. I love this. I, I love this uh, this character dedication that you were bringing. Um, yeah. So cool. I like that it. Oh boy. And I'm loving this female focused feature. <laughs> this is gonna be. This is gonna be good. Yeah. Passing the Bechdel test. Uh huh. So far. Okay. Um. Yeah. Let's get it Martin's, underway. M- Martin Freeman, the show begins. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna get us underway here. I'm gonna set a scene for us. Okay. All right. So Jacob, yeah, uh, Regina, what is uh, c- describe the scene? Uh, interior where? Um, interior fantasy um, shopping establishment. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um. All right. All right. Some someone is presumably committing some uh, some some shopping related crimes. <laughs> oh no. This is a, we got a mystery suspense thriller <laughs> on our hands here. Now that mustache I notice Regina Regina is is massaging that uh, that that Tomto oh. that she got. I was going to say 
massaging massaging oh the tom toe <laughs> the is tom, that what you call the it the tom toe that little rot that rotty tom toe she she she, she got an eye on that tomato um as as far as she's concerned, if you want a um, if you want a compelling action adventure mystery play, uh, there's only one man for the job, and that's Kevin James reprising his role as Paul Blart Mall Cop. So, if I am not mistaken, you have used your freshly won but slightly rotten tomato to summon Paul Blart Mall Cop. Paul Blart Mall Cop, specifically Paul Bart Blart Mall Cop 2. <laughs> right, because that, that's the only one. The first one got over 15%. The first one got this over, a, over 15%. It got a 33. <laughs> the second one got a much, 5. Yeah, much like the Rotten Tomato itself, this Paul Blart is not ripe, is no longer ripe. No, he's a, he's a little rougher around the edges. Well, well past. Oh, man, look at him. Look at this potato man. Look at this potato cop. <laughs> He's, he is a glorious <laughs> potato man. <laughs> so glorious. Oh, there my God. Is. Oh, wow. I think that we can honestly say that this is the only game of Dungeons & Dragons to ever include Paul Blart. <laughs> it's it's going to be yeah. the first of many, though. We're starting <laughs> yeah. something. If, hey, hey, commenters, go down in the comments and tell your Paul Blart-related <laughs> D&D story. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> maybe, maybe Andy, mm-hmm. a.k.a. Noob the Loser, will... We'll draw one into a comic on oh his boy, oh boy. on his popular blog. I was worried I wouldn't. There you go. Today. Well, they do. I mean, they make um, like D and D adventures. They make role playing adventures for other the the blog. other properties. Is there a a Paul Blart yeah, yeah. expanded universe for Dungeons and Dragons? A Paul Blart D twenty system. Yeah. The, well, there's D, there's D twenty yeah. modern, so you could definitely set an adventure in the world of. Yeah. Paul Blart, Malcolm. Yeah. The Blartiverse. The Blartiverse. Of course. It's part like, of the expanded Blartiverse. Like when you when you play the Star Wars RPG, everybody right. wants to be Jedi. In in his system, everybody exactly. wants to be Mall Cops. <laughs> <laughs> there there are other classes, but by far the best is Mall Cop. Mall Cops are so OP. Uh, so with the with the RPG, would it be called Paul Blart PG? Yes. Okay. We, Paul Blart PG, a D twenty system, brought to you by Mall Cops of the Coast. <laughs> <laughs> Hey guys, if you're watching this and you want to design that system, you yeah. can mail it directly to me. Yeah, I would. If somebody designs it, we'll do an entire spinoff episode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm talking core classes. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm talking, you know, a full a full system <clears throat> that you can run start to finish. Yeah, some some sample um, some sample adventures, some 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 dungeon crawls. So while Jacob draws, I will explain how exactly it was that Regina summoned Paul Blart. Uh, what happens is that the Rotten Tomato functions essentially like a Pokeball. Oh, nice. <laughs> uh, so she she holds it aloft in the sky and says, Paul Blart, I choose you, and then throws it to the ground, and it just goes. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to and imagine then, that he just like coalesces yeah. out of the goo. Yeah, like he is birthed yeah. like, a, like a baby calf yeah. from the slime. <laughs> The slime just keeps growing and growing. <laughs> yeah, you you would think that it would be like a puff of smoke, and then he's there. But nope, he's just kind of like slowly being birthed from this <laughs> just old tomato. That's a whole nother comic that we were not drawing. <laughs> no, yeah, that, well, that's the se- that's the prequel. Could have just drawn three panels of Paul Blart just like squirming into life out of <laughs> a pool of rotten fruit. Yep, we we would have won a fucking Ignatz for that shit. Dude. <laughs> that's beautiful. <laughs> I want to check in with um, with Martin about what he thinks about the movie so far. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm a big fan of the of the Mall Cop uh, franchise in general. Um, uh-huh. I like that it is comedy, and uh, I can take my kids to it. You know, <laughs> I didn't know you had kids. Oh yeah, uh, I've got one kid who has got four heads. I got another <laughs> kid. Uh, he's got one head, but I got I'm real I'm really uh, holding out. I think he's gonna grow a few more. <laughs> uh, if he doesn't, of course, I will. Uh, I will be forced to kill him. Yeah. So Legsy, Legsy's just uh, just chatting, like what? Yeah. Because like Paul, the great thing about Paul Blart is it's like mm-hmm. it's for sure a, a show you can talk through. You yeah. Know? Yeah. It's, it's like a casual it's fun to do good. So Legsy's like, okay, Regina's got the beginning of this. I'm gonna go make some small talk. Um. Mm-hmm. So wait. So you're saying did did you have all your heads to start, or did you grow some of them like 
as as you grew. No, well, uh, when you age. when you are about eleven or twelve years old, your body starts to undergo changes. You have heads where you didn't have heads before. Uh, you know. <laughs> Which was your first head? Uh, uh the, uh, the the head on my right. It's not really polite uh, to ask. See, the, I'm, I, it's honestly. not. I don't know. I'm I'm so. You know, I'm I'm no, so no, it's, not. It's, it's totally fine. Indoctrinated. In fact, I respect how direct you are in asking. Most people would be embarrassed. Because that because it is a really rude question. Well, I don't. I worked with. <laughs> I grew up in a mannequin factory, so there were just fake heads all around. Oh so my I, gosh! I don't know. Uh, well, I like all those extra legs you have because here's the thing: until I was about eleven or twelve and went through my special ogre period, I had fourteen legs. Interesting. Uh, as all baby yeah. ogres do. And the other ones <laughs> fell off as the heads were growing in. Um, well, I, could, I could take this all the way back to the spawning pool, but I don't know how interested you are. In I'm so about interested. Ogre. Yeah, just assume that Assume that the, uh, the whole title is made out of bones. Uh, oh, sure. She's making some bones. Like very small, very small bones, like cartilage. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Do, do, does cartilage count as bones? Nope. No? <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Roxa, Roxa just like looks up from the knife she's whittling. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, what's what's Roxa up to uh, th- this time around? Uh, Roxa always finds <laughs> ways to entertain herself while while the main action is going on. Well, I was a, uh, I was real tired from that sandwich I ate. I was in a little <laughs> bit of a food coma. So I've been taking a nap. <laughs> That's it. I mean, I, I got in the know, car, it's... it made me sleepy, I'm filled with food, mm-hmm. whatever, I'm going to take a nap. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if, if you recall, if you go back, when we all said go team, when, mm-hmm. when we had the plan, Roxa did not say it. <laughs> Roxa just stared at us, she and was... no one no <laughs> one said anything, it's because we, <laughs> when Roxa gets sleepy, you like especially don't want to be like getting on her case. Did you yeah. see how long it... that staring contest took? Yeah, it's true. we were all like... there. I was thinking with, about uh, my dad. With sandwiches it's, from the, uh, you know, from the uh, eternity that is Demon Johnny's <laughs> mouth. I just. <laughs> it's best to let sleeping Roxas lie. Yeah. Uh, you you could lose a finger uh, trying to trying to wake her. So I, I understand. Um, Jacob, can I say just how proud I am of you <laughs> for for making it this time? It's Blarsenal because I was. I was going to correct you. I was going to force you to change it, but you just did it on yeah, your you own. You saw me writing it. personal, didn't you? Yeah, and I was like, "Wait, uh, 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 uh." Because I started nah, writing. My boy's got like, it. No, Blart's and all. I like <laughs> this like fantasy Blart with the shield <laughs> yeah. and swords and, and elf uh, ears. Yeah, and mm-hmm. the uh, ponytail. Yeah, the ponytail yeah. and the elf ears are all that's really different about him. <laughs> well, he still wears like a suit. <laughs> ogres do love puns, so I am I am ogre joyed. <laughs> <laughs> would would you say you're ogre? Jo- oh, you 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 got it. Okay. <laughs> oh man, Jonathan, you're getting scooped this episode. <laughs> uh, you're getting absolutely just people are biting your style left and right, my man. And I apologize. Uh, okay, so who's up next? I guess um, Legsy is Legsy, I believe. Yeah. Yeah, Legsy, do you want to defer your role? No, or you wanna, you no, wanna Legsy, Legsy likes the, uh, the 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 number two spot. All right, get in there, my man. Um, this is great, great so far. I like this, I like this kind of Elseworlds premise we have with Paul Blart three. Yeah, where it's just kind of like, you know, one and two were straight up, but now like three is just fully off yeah, the rails. Yeah, it's just like, like Evil Dead. It just like goes fantasy yeah. for no apparent reason. I think that's what happened. I yeah. think yeah, Paul Blart definitely segued through a portal. Yeah, it's definitely an <laughs> interdimensional Blart scenario. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Tides of War. Yeah, this is this is part of the the Blartscape <laughs> series. <laughs> Blartscape. <laughs> yeah, I was I was way too proud of that. Okay, so Lexi is um Lexi has taken over. Yeah. Um, so I guess what 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 I imagine is happening is that you guys are is Paul Blart is here. Are you guys acting with Paul Blart or is Paul Blart just kind of? Are you guys just taking it <laughs> yeah, back? I don't know how we how we control him. A one man show. <laughs> You we, can't control him. We he brought just him started here. doing this when yeah. he got here. He's he's a professional. He uh, he gets in there. He does everything in one take. Mm-hmm. I've I've read that about Paul Blart. That he is a, a complete professional, a method actor. He has been acting like Paul Blart for years, years. Yeah. He hasn't set mm-hmm. foot off a Segway in a decade. So let's just assume that 
uh, Legsy is running tech. Legsy has kind of rigged up a bunch of her legs and has kind of got some sandbags and some lights going. Uh, you know, and Jonathan, the bone staff, is helping out as, as best he can. Um, okay, so yeah, uh, Martin, what do you what do you think? The 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 title scroll has ended. Um, we're we're into the action now. How how are you feeling? Oh, uh, you know, I'm thoroughly engrossed. I'm like ninety percent of the way to distracted. Uh, I'm like I'm like totally. I I'm still aware of what's going on behind me. Yeah, just a little bit. But I'm One almost of- to the point where if somebody were to sneak up on me and say you know, uh, push me or something. I don't, I don't want to, you know, I can't be specific about what somebody would do behind me. Tase you, I don't have that kind of knowledge. So two, two of your heads are, are watching the screen. Yeah. The third is, is idly scrolling on a, um, on an information pendant. Yes. Uh, what's your favorite thing to check on your information pendant uh, my, or eye pendant? Is, okay. So that's, that's, um, like my cell phone. Okay. Uh, well, I'm, I'm reviewing, uh, I took a hoover earlier today and I'm, uh-huh. I'm writing a review with with my right hand, my left hand is uh, is enjoying my my crotch popcorn. Yeah, who who was yeah. your hoofer driver? Uh, it was a, a fellow named Buttercup. Oh, Buttercup. Yeah, it was, he's uh, he was a good boy. I hope you you gave uh, him a better rating than we did. Well, he sure jacked up the price there at the end, but I drank hmm. like I drank like a fish while I was while I was riding. <laughs> So. Did uh, you know? I hate when you're driving in a hoofer and like yeah, they offer you the bottle of water and they're always like oats. You want some oats? Could I offer you some oats, sir? And you're like, I don't want any oats. Like, I'm just, I'm, I'm just going to my friend's house. Because I'm gonna eat there. Has anyone ever accepted the oats? Like, I don't think so. I don't so. think anyone. Yeah. Uh, here's here's a tip. This is a, a life hack uh, for next time you're in a hoofer. Uh, bring an apple. <laughs> bring an apple. Uh, bring a sliced up apple and uh, and and offer it to your driver of palm forward. <laughs> I've heard that if you if you dangle it on a string in front of the driver, they'll go mm-hmm. way faster. <laughs> Oh man, yeah, that is going to affect your rating, though. So I, I am a fan of Hoover. Uh, it's, it's also, you know, it's complicated to use something like uh, like Tinder when there's three people in one body. Oh yeah, because uh, you never know. Like I have to put like uh, I have to put little emojis over the other faces that are not on that account. Yeah, I guess you have to code it a little bit so that people know yeah. who's who's speaking. Or like I am the handsome one, you know, in, in the description. <laughs> I am the handsome head of the three. Which is a little subjective, do, isn't it? But right. Do you have do you have nicknames for your individual heads so you guys can kind of tell each other apart a little bit? Oh no, no, I do not. No, no, no. That's that's good. I think you know all for one, as it were. Yeah, yeah. Um. Hey. What? Hey, hey, Martin. You, quit, quit talking about your apps and like pay attention to what's going on. It's the climax. Oh. The climax in which we've lost control of Blart. <laughs> <laughs> Let me take a peek here at what's going on there. <laughs> so we've Paul Blart. Paul Blart has been birthed from a tomato, uh, has ridden into our hearts, and now is escaping. He's grown sentient and is escaping into this fantasy realm to live his life. Is that what's happening? <laughs> uh, yeah. Paul Blart is not acting at all. He is just getting away. <laughs> and he's what is, too uh, fast. What is, what is Martin saying? Is this Blart of the show? Oh, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy, oh, boy. Can we get Andy saying that so we can triple it? Yeah. Yeah. Is this Blart of the show? Uh, <laughs> there you go. We got there. Wonderful. Well, um, uh, Legsy kind of dropped the ball on this one. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm going to be honest. Legsy was, you know... She, like she's she was not, supposed to. She's not great at like wrangling talent. Mm-hmm. I guess yeah. she's sort of a lone wolf type. She was supposed to play uh, Paul Blart's love interest in this scene. Yeah, but um, yeah, I guess she, she just couldn't. Her acting couldn't match Paul Blart's, and he just had to. He had to go in search of a, a better muse. Well, well, Blart has no interest in love. He only has interest <laughs> yeah. in fighting crime. <laughs> He's off to find them all. <laughs> His only mistress is justice, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, uh, I guess the, the stage is set. It is time for, uh, for Roxa to ascend and, and end this, this, dar- this dire tale. This is, uh, <laughs> this is a real good play that you guys are doing. I like the part where Paul Blart is escaping. <laughs> this is the act- So, yeah, you guys were, you guys were worried, mm-hmm. but Martin seems to be Martin seems to think that that was part of the yeah, show. This is the act to all is lost moment. It's blur. It's blur of the show. <laughs> like, blur is escaping. <laughs> and I like, yeah, yeah, but... it's incorporating the audience too. Is something you don't see a lot. It's like the way that Paul Blart uh, is yeah is driving his Segway around. No, 
Now, um, Martin, you you went to film school for a little while, right? I you did, you yeah, know well, about the the hero's um, the hero's journey or the the Blart's journey? I do. Yes, two of my heads went to film school. Uh, <laughs> the second uh, just went directly into a management job in retail. Um, <laughs> to support the others, I like that. <laughs> Uh, but you actually worked for um, at one of Quadzo's factories for a while, right? Uh, I did. Yes, uh, it's uh, an interesting tie-in, almost almost George Lucas like, and, and neatly putting everything together. <laughs> Wait, you know? <laughs> I learned in film you know my dad? You know George Lucas is your dad? No, Quadzo's my dad. No, oh my god! What? <laughs> Never mind. I'm sorry. I'm trying to ca- I'm trying to catch this blart. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what was the question about, about film school? You asked, uh, the the, the he, question oh, yes. was about all the uh, all the stages in the Paul Blart hero uh, journey. And specifically the Paul Blart hero journey yeah. is different than other hero journey. Uh, right. Wherein uh, you have your, your call to be a mall cop, mm-hmm. and then uh, you have... Oh, I haven't um, exactly seen the Paul Blart movies, <laughs> so right. I'm just going to wing this response based on what I think happens. I think part two is refusal of the cop, right? Uh, yeah, that sounds right. Yeah, and then there's uh, Blar Trail. I think is one of the steps. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness! <laughs> oh man! <laughs> is he oh in? no! Oh my god! <laughs> and devour. Oh, I love this. There's only one Dean way. And Johnny. There's only one Dean way to wrangle Blart at this yeah. point. <laughs> oh, so and Rox to go is just, the void. Rox is just watching this. Like, calmly stands up, walks over to him, and just is like, enough of this. Now, I, I love this because it, it, it this is a wonderful, like, act three turn, which is where Demon Johnny was secretly the hero the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> this is really sort of a, or sort of a tragedy. Uh-huh. It's, a, it's a Blartzian tragedy. <laughs> it's a true Blartster piece. Blartster piece. Oh, no. <laughs> So is he get, is is he getting sucked in? Yeah. Yeah. Into the yeah into the void that that I guess well he's gonna like it in there because it's just basically all sandwiches. It's mostly sandwiches, <laughs> yeah. as we've established. He doesn't know that yet though. <laughs> it also this is it's a bit mall like within there, I believe. Yeah. Yeah, because it's a cultural void. <laughs> hey. <laughs> I was just gonna say. <laughs> I'm sorry. I had a, I don't know what had, legs. He just blacked out for a second. <laughs> Well, the the way that uh, Demon Johnny's void works is it is full of sandwiches, but that's just because there's infinite Subway restaurants <laughs> inside Demon Johnny's stomach. <laughs> it's not a bad. So they're show. just they're hot and fresh all the time. Yeah. I'm so happy this is, this is where this episode went. <laughs> Julia, you have to write after you're done. You have to write thin. <laughs> we've we've done so many episodes of Drawfee, and I don't think we've mm-hmm. ever fully explored the Blardoverse. No, it's true. <laughs> We've never talked about Paul Blart Mall Cop and the cultural impact that it has had. Well, uh, I mean, he's a Blart of us all now, so we, <laughs> there's no escaping it. Uh, oh, wow. I, I oh, I guess, I'm I guess he's a Blart of us all now. Oh, no, you got it. Okay. Jonathan. <laughs> so, <laughs> Jonathan, did you not eat breakfast this morning or something? <laughs> No, I I skipped it. I I I'm I'm, go, I'm on a diet. Yeah, we, I get, well, you're all I skin get, and get bone, it, di- so diet, I shouldn't be having to do this for diet, you. Diet, because I'm dead. Di- Mine was better. Yours is better. <laughs> but I'll allow it. Um, no oh skin, goodness. just bones. <laughs> Here's the thing. Also, is that, we have uh, fun. Uh, Demon Johnny did not was not a big fan of uh, Paul Bart. Uh, Mall Cop 2. Right. He was more a fan of his first work. So, I thought uh, the second one was kind of a betrayal. Yeah, so he, he gets, he gets a, a little peeved. A blur trail. Right. So he like he saw the opportunity and just took it, but he, he gets real angry looking. Oh, yeah. So uh, That's that's kind of his, like, you know in Buffy when the vampires would reveal that they were vampires? Yeah, yeah they get those gross wrinkle faces. Yeah. Uh-huh. They get those gross wrinkle faces. Yeah, that's why I didn't watch that show, because I didn't like the gross wrinkle faces. Well, this is tragic, and I am full on crying. Oh, <laughs> just six eyes bawling, bawling mm. out. I like that every episode seems to end with our antagonist in tears. <laughs> <laughs> well, they were, yeah, they so were uh, you know, they were more um, nostalgic, t- you know, tears, tears for our father in the, in yeah. the last one. Well, in this one, they're, they're tears of, uh, of, of joy and understanding, I would say. Yeah. Because, um, like, I think for... 
Demon Johnny to become the true hero that this land needs, uh, there there needed to be a sacrifice. A sacrifice. Um, yes. <laughs> yes. Well done. Oh. A sacrifice. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I shouldn't have done that no, voice. No, I'm no, sorry. You should, uh, g- <laughs> anyone, anyone can do Jonathan. I'm just the only one who does him. I like that Julia is shading this. So basically, this is like the equivalent of if, of if a movie was all of a sudden in 3D. <laughs> <laughs> well, you guys were having a, a lengthy conversation about Paul Blart, so it's I, true. I felt like I had to keep going with something. <laughs> I like to think of it as one of those like Ren and Stimpy zoom ends where yeah. it's like mm-hmm. horrifying and detailed all of a sudden. Yeah, you just see all yep. of the veins like popping on his nose. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. If she felt oh, she man. was constrained for time, she would have just written in the last panel, and then Paul Blart <laughs> is eaten. <laughs> <laughs> True. In which Paul Blart becomes eaten. Just a, a black panel with white cursive. <laughs> <laughs> so does does this mean that that we get to summon Paul Blart whenever we want? Out, out of the basically, uh, yeah. I, I guess it's yeah. it's up to Demon Johnny. Uh, it's true. He seems I have he seems no pretty passionate about having him inside. I we, think that we still would have no way to control him. <laughs> as, as he's, he's a mind of his own. Unless we get an item that allows us to, to control a blart. <laughs> a yeah. talisman of control a blart. A talisman of control blart. <laughs> uh, guys, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and say, uh, I'm going to make a, a, an executive uh, dungeon master decision. Uh, the Let's see. Um, yeah, I guess the, the D, we'll just use the D20. The D20 can now be used as a uh, as a blart die. Um, so once once per round, we can roll, and if if you get a natural twenty, you can summon Paul Blart again. Critical, <laughs> critical Blart, critical yeah, Blart. If, if... Just at any time. So there's a one in ch- twenty chance that at any moment one of us could summon a Blart. Exactly. That's yeah, because Demon Johnny. I like to think that Demon Johnny is having trouble keeping Blart down. So yeah. Yeah. He just, he just has you, those. Now, is that can summon Paul Blart or must summon Paul Blart on a twenty? <laughs> Oh my god. Yeah, you have no choice. Paul Blart disappears. Yeah, just we're rolling to see who goes first, and all of a sudden, mm. Paul Blart pops out. He just segues across the scene. Beautiful. Yeah, did, did all right. Johnny, the, the segue is part of him, so Johnny had yeah. to suck up that as well. Oh yeah, well that's, you know, and that's that's just yours now. Yeah. You just Damn. get a segue. Congratulations. Wow. One segue acquired. Damn and wow. So, um, did, do, did we distract him? So you guys, you guys all... Take your your places on the stage and and bow uh, and do we? Uh, I, I, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and say I'm wrapped. Uh, I am cowed by this by this display. Martin Martin Freeman, yeah, yeah like you, you guys get a standing O. I'm gonna stand. I'm gonna clap and I'm gonna exclaim, "Man, if somebody were about to tase me, I wouldn't even care." <laughs> so you say that and you smile for a second. You smell for another second, and then you say, oh, and then you fall over dead. <laughs> I got killed by the taser? <laughs> that is not what those are for. Yeah. Dude, Moody, you said tase, it's not a, tase to death. It's a big taser. Uh, it's a, Yeah. Um, you look over at Francis, and he's holding what's clearly a gun. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I am. Um, I, I packed in the dark this morning, so. <laughs> <laughs> you could have yeah, told I mean, us you know, were going to do that. I think we would have still been cool with there's it. going to like be some grainy cell phone footage of this on YouTube, and it's going to cause a huge controversy. <laughs> the nation's going to blow up. So you guys uh, you guys drag Martin over <laughs> into a bush, um, and uh, you, you steal his keys to the gate, and uh, and you enter. Uh, so I guess, yeah, number one, congratulations. Uh, you've defeated the ogre. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> number two, you have entered, uh, Daryl's lab. So, um... It's all ogre for him. <laughs> Jonathan, a man is dead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me. And I've Paul been Blart's dead. And in an infinite void. <laughs> <laughs> it's a win-win, I'd say. Um, so guys, yeah, as you, um, so you, you walk through the gate, and, uh, you see the entrance to the lab. And you all rush over. Uh, you're kind of weary because you're not sure what else could be lurking. Um, but then you open the door and you you enter the the main area of Daryl's lab. Yeah. Wow. Oh my God. Yeah. So as you as you enter the main chamber, um, you see uh, Francis instantly runs over to the, the the giant computer and he's like, Oh, okay. Well, so 
any anything that we would need would be behind uh, that big door with a spider on it. Uh, Daryl kind of had a thing about spiders, so that's you know it's it's a bit of a motif. Oh, I got a spider. Uh, I yeah. Oh th- um yeah. I don't like him so much. I named him Jeffers. <laughs> <laughs> Did you now? Yeah. Jeffers, huh? Okay. Well, um, this we've got a, a real full house situation going on over here. Um, and I, I'm, I'm glad, I am glad that there is a spider with us now. Uh, and I'm glad that it's not a magic spider. I'm glad it doesn't have a funny voice. <laughs> that is what I am most pleased about. Yeah, no, it's just a spider. Spiders don't talk. Yeah, it's a spider on a piece of string. That's cool. So, yeah. uh, yeah, just keep him on that string, bud, if, if you, if you don't mind. So, um, so Francis gets hard to work on trying to crack this password so that he can get into, uh, into Daryl's private chamber, which is where he is convinced, uh, there will be be a clue hidden to uh, the the secret to unveil the secret of Daryl's murder, um, and while he does that, he says, um, "So yeah, again, I don't know if I mentioned this. This is basically like Monster HQ. So uh, if you guys would mind maybe just like looking around, like exploring a little bit, and making sure that no monsters are going to uh, do what I did to uh, to Martin Freeman uh, while I'm you know searching on this computer, that would be like a super big help for me. Thanks." So um, he kind of he kind of gestures over to the three doors over there, which are the only other doors in the in in the the laboratory. Um, so he gestures to the three doors, and uh, and and suggests you you check out one of them. Uh, I, I I would recommend not splitting up. Uh, there there could be some serious some serious bruisers in here. Uh, I would say that you guys are going to want to stick together for this one. So he recommends you guys go through one of the doors, and that is where our straw poll comes in. Guys, uh, we are going to be going through one of these doors next round, and that is up to you, whether we go through the green door, the red door, or the yellow door. Um, just a real a real simple uh, ABC this time. Uh, so you guys vote on which door you want to go through. Uh, and in addition, uh, one action item, uh, a less strenuous action item for me because I don't want to have to draw 900 items this time around. Uh, I want everyone to write a comment about what they think Daryl's password should be. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I guess funniest password wins is how we're going to play that. Yep. So leave a comment with what you want Daryl's password to be. <clears throat> Vote for which door you want the ladies book club to go through. Um, and then, guys, I guess we'll we'll see you next time. That's that's it for this round of Draga. Uh, great work. And, guys, before we go, uh, we do have a couple of honorable mentions. There were so many amazing prizes this time around. Um, so I just want to read a couple off as, as we're wrapping guys, up here. Guys, all of, all of the comments have been so good. It's, yeah, thank it's you. It's been really, really fun reading all the stuff you guys come up with. Yeah. Um, so before, so yeah, two, two last things, two, two bits of housekeeping here. Uh, number one, uh, Draga is going to be a monthly show from now on. Uh, I wish I could do it more, but it is, it is a lot of work getting all these moving pieces together. So it's going to be moving to monthly. Um, eventually maybe we can switch back to, to every other week. Uh, that's kind of dependent on, on you guys. Uh, like the more viewers we get, the more response, the more, uh, you know, sharing and just hype around the show, the more episodes we can put out. So yeah. Um, Share the episodes with your friends. Get them excited. Uh, play your own games of Draga. I think I've seen like one or two people mention that they're doing that. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, yeah, just, that's yeah, a, yeah the, definitely definitely let us know about that. I'd mm-hmm. love to hear what other games of Draga are like. Yeah, uh, just I, what I would recommend is everyone just go down to your basement and build your own little model hype train for Draga <laughs> uh, and share the show if you would please. Uh, now let's get down to these honorable mentions. Uh, Zombie Batman Jesus said beef drags, which are like cigarettes, but has meat in them. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> oh my god. Great. Uh, Philip Zachary said forget me nots, a simple string tied into a bow. When unraveled, it makes a player unable to be targeted by another player's item. They simply forgot you were there. That's a really good one, but I feel like it, it's just a little too it's a little too obvious. I feel like it, it would just instantly be used to fuck over another player. Uh, so, but I still really liked it. So thank you so much, Philip. Ernest Hamzaj says, "Why not a vial of Pepsi Crunch with a regeneration effect as well as a refreshing citrus taste?" <laughs> um, I think we'll definitely find a vial of Pepsi we, Crunch we at one love point or another. The references to other stuff that we've made. Oh yeah, it shows you were you were paying attention, and that makes us <laughs> feel good. Uh, and last but not least, Grace Honeycutt suggested a Club Penguin VIP membership. <laughs> <laughs> Joke's Perfect. on you, Grace. Joke's on you. We've all got one already. Uh, yeah, all of our characters have been 
Club Penguin members, VIP members, for, life. for a long time. Yeah. Uh, quick shout out to Poison Taffy, Benjamin Zhao, Tom Wallace, and Aiden Morris, who also had great suggestions. And a shout out to Pockery on Tumblr for their awesome ladies book club fan art. Yeah, guys, check us out, uh, drawfee.tumblr.com. We, we reblog a lot of fan art there, and we post the finished art for each episode. Also, follow us on Twitter, uh, Drawfee Show, at Drawfee Show. Um, and I guess listen to our new podcast on HeadGum, uh, What Should We Draw? Yeah, I guess listen that. to that if you're not doing I guess listen to I that. I guess listen to that, you know? Maybe leave yeah. a review even. Please do. Um, well, that's that's all I've got for this week. Guys, thank you so much. Uh, a big shout out to to Andy for for voicing uh, Martin Threeman, the, uh, the, <laughs> the ogre slash cinemaphile. You straight up destroyed me, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I am gone. Noob the Loser and your D&D stories on, yeah, on Tumblr. Yeah. If you guys have Draga stories even, you can send them Ooh. to uh, yourdndstories.com. We'll, um, we'll put some links to that in the bottom of the episode. Uh, thanks as well to the Ladies Book Club. Guys, it's, it's always a pleasure. Um, and we will see you next time. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Oh, we're sorry. <laughs> oh, yeah. Sure, we're sorry. <laughs>